Back in 1964, a super cool movie hit the big screen. Mary Poppins, a film everyone loved, told the magical story of a special nanny in London. The songs, characters, and adventures made it a favorite worldwide. But did you know there are some really interesting facts behind the scenes of this awesome film? From funny stories to surprising secrets, and even some sad moments, there's a lot more to find out about Mary Poppins. So stick around and keep watching to discover these hidden gems. Now we're curious about your own memories or experiences with this movie. What's a special moment you have related to this film? Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. We're excited to hear from you. In 1964, a timeless tale graced the screens, capturing the hearts of audiences everywhere. The story unfolded in a bustling city, resonating deeply with viewers young and old. This movie wasn't just about entertainment, it became a cultural phenomenon, offering a ray of hope during a time of change. Set in the early 20th century, it transported audiences to a simpler era where imagination reigned supreme. The main character wasn't just another figure, they became an emblem of resilience and creativity. Through their adventures with a family in need, valuable lessons about love, family, and the power of imagination were imparted. As viewers watched, they were whisked away to a world where anything seemed possible. The whimsical escapades and unforgettable songs continue to enchant audiences, proving that some stories truly endure the test of time. In the film, a notable actor, Ed Wynn, known for his comedic talents, took on a role that showcased his versatility. Feeding the birds at St. Paul's Cathedral, portrayed as an act of kindness, became forbidden due to environmental concerns in later years. Matthew Garber, a young actor in the movie, earned extra for each take of a scene he found challenging. These anecdotes offer glimpses into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and the impact of the film on its cast. In the world of movies, there are some timeless classics that stick with us for generations. One such film, which is a favorite among many, was brought to life by the talented songwriters Robert B. Sherman and Richard M. Sherman. These two creative minds crafted over 30 songs for the movie during its development. This beloved film has even earned a spot in a prestigious list of 1001 movies you must see before you die, carefully put together by Steven Schneider. One of the actors in the film, Arthur Veery Treacher, made his final appearance in theaters with this movie. Although his theatrical career ended with this film, he continued to appear on television screens until 1974. Mary Poppins is a magical tale with unforgettable music that has enchanted audiences around the world. It's not just a movie, it's a piece of storytelling that will continue to captivate audiences for years to come. In one scene, Mr. Dawes Sr. struggles with a step, a spontaneous addition prompted by Walt Disney's observation of actor Van entertaining crew members during a makeup test. Van's comic routine convinced Disney to cast him and include the stumbling bit. Jane Darwell, known for her roles in significant films, appears in Mary Poppins, one of five movies selected for the National Film Registry. The setting shifted from the 1930s to the Edwardian era at the suggestion of songwriters, distinguishing it from its sequel set in the 30s. Did you know that there's an interesting story behind a famous song from a well-known movie? Back in the day, a songwriter named Robert B. Sherman was searching for the perfect song for a movie about a character named Mary Poppins. He got a brilliant idea when his son mentioned getting a polio vaccine on a cube of sugar. This inspired the creation of the catchy song A Spoonful of Sugar. The person who originally made Mary Poppins, P.L. Travers, wanted only British actors in the movie, but Walt Disney and Bill Walsh decided to mix British and American actors to make the movie appeal to more people. This decision made the movie even more popular than expected. So you see, sometimes unexpected things can lead to great creations in movies. In pre-production, a sequence called The Magic Compass, comprising four songs, got dropped from the movie. One of these songs, The Beautiful Briny, later surfaced in Bedknobs and Broomsticks. The melody of another song from this sequence, The Land of Sand, found its way into Trust in Me in the Jungle Book, albeit with completely different lyrics. Originally released in 1964, the film played at New York City's Radio City Music Hall. Its encore came nine years later, part of a 50th anniversary tribute to producer Walt Disney. P.L. Travers, the author of the Mary Poppins books, gave hearty approval to the casting of Dame Julie Andrews, having only heard her voice over the phone. Andrews interviewed from her bed after delivering her daughter, Emma Walton Hamilton, got the nod. The film's journey from drop sequences to a 50th anniversary encore, and Travers' nod to Andrews, weaves an interesting tale of creation and recognition. Stanley Holloway, initially selected for the role of Admiral Boom, declined due to his commitment to My Fair Lady. 
This paved the way for another actor to take on the character in the 1964 film. In a rare 1977 interview, P.L. Travers acknowledged the film's overall quality and positive elements. However, she expressed dissatisfaction, deeming it significantly divergent from her original literary works. Jane Darwell, residing in the motion picture country home, was hesitant when approached by Walt Disney Pictures to play the Bird Woman. Disney's determination led him to personally visit Darwell, convincing her to take the role. He even arranged for a limo to transport her to and from the set during her single day of shooting. These behind-the-scenes insights add depth to the production of the iconic film, reflecting the challenges and efforts that contributed to its unique character. Each decision, whether in casting or creative interpretation, played a role in shaping the final product. B.O. Travers, the author of the original source material, had a strong hand in the creation of the movie. She meticulously scrutinized the script, causing frustration among Disney writers with her attention to detail. Travers proposed alterations after watching the final product, but Walt Disney dismissed many of her requests, including her disapproval of the musical score by Robert B. Sherman and Richard M. Sherman. Travers preferred period pieces for the soundtrack, such as Ta Ra Ra Boom Di or Greensleeves. Bert, a versatile character in the film, takes on several roles. He appears as a one-man band, a chalk artist, a chimney sweep, and a kite salesman. After the animated sequence, Bert suggests he might also peddle hot chestnuts. During the barnyard sing-along scene in Jolly Holiday, Marnie Nixon provided the singing voice for the geese. Amidst the enchanting scenes, a seasoned actress brought her talent to seven top movies, leaving a strong impression on the golden era of cinema. In a memorable moment, a mesmerizing robotic bird gracefully lands on her arm during a famous sequence. As the music plays, a character reminisces about a pastime, hinting at the presence of a king. This attention to detail paints a vivid picture of the past, immersing viewers in its charm. The movie's magic lies in its ability to transport audiences to another time, where every frame feels like a masterpiece and every sound adds to the experience. Julie Andrews stands out as the sole actress to receive an Oscar nomination and subsequent win in the lead actress category for her role in this Walt Disney production. Notably, the song Jolly Holiday doesn't mention the name Doris. Instead, it opts for the holy English name of Dorcas. Betty Lou Gerson portrays the old crone who assures to shelter the bank's children following their departure from the Dawes, Tomes, Mousley, Grubbs Fidelity Fiduciary Bank. 